Personal notice. Change is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Solo in Whispers, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, really I do need your help to figure it out. Because it's rather the sort of thing that makes a man lose a lot of sleep. And at the age of 45, I find that sleep is almost as important as food. You see, I I went to the gate this morning. Our place is out in the country. And there was a messenger with a package, and I signed for it. Nothing extraordinary there. And you'll probably think there's nothing extraordinary when you... You have to sign for a package along with this letter. Hey, what's this, Brooksy? Package? Uh Uh-huh, it came with a letter. Oh, what's this? Well, a record. I already unwrapped it. Anyway, Mr. Valentine... Only draft record. <laughs> it's like a blank one from here. No, no, the other side, I guess, see? Oh, yeah. But it's still blank in the middle. No label. Go on. Um, anyway, Mr. Valentine, I'd appreciate a call from you on the subject of why it is unnecessary to explain my whisper. Whisper? What's that? Is what? No, well, that's what he says. Why it is unnecessary to explain my whisper. Uh-huh. Oh, well, maybe it isn't his. It's in quotes, George. And that's all. Sincerely, Pietro Seville. Huh? Well, come on, come on. Play the record. Here we are. Okay. Pietro Seville, a man bought by a whisper. You, too, can hear voices. Hmm. You can hear horns and drums, too, if you got it bad enough. Sounds like he got his records mixed. Yeah, I've heard that. Come to the sun, Remsky Corsica. <laughs> Angel, you should be on a quiz <laughs> Only that's kind of a peculiar whisper, wouldn't you say? Uh, maybe you just heard this played too much. It's too popular. It's from an opera, George, Le Door. Not the only one I remember. I saw it twice. The who? The Golden Cockerel by Rimsky. I know. So I'm getting an education. But I don't see what George, this... George, maybe Mr. Seville is bothered by a woman. He sounded like the type... But that's of... what the opera's about, I think. It's a fantasy. It's about a king who's given this magic golden rooster to watch over him and his kingdom. And he... Finally strikes down the king himself with its beak. <laughs> How gay. The queen. She sings this song. She's the one who makes a fool out of the king. She really takes him over the ropes, and yet he won't give her up. Ah, uh-huh, twas ever thus. Nice melody, though, isn't it? Mm. Listen. talking about? Brooksy, there's only one way to find out. That's to ask him right back. Well, personally, I think he's a little off. We'll soon find out. Hold everything on. Hello? Hello. Uh, Mr. Pietro Seville, please. Will you call him? Mr. Pietro Seville can't come to the telephone, Valentine. He's dead. Hey, who is this? Riley? Yeah, listen, Valentine. Get out of here fast, will you? Seville's been murdered. He was struck down by the golden beak of a rooster. A rooster? Yeah, yeah, you heard me. A thing called the golden cockerel. Well, that's what somebody called it. But it's just a fancy gold-headed cane. Well, it's shaped like a beak, isn't it? A rooster's beak, Miss Brooks. Seville was struck over the head with it, huh? Well, it's sure heavy enough. Yeah, I'll say it was. His wife attacked the fancy name on it when she saw the thing lying beside the body. You see, this happens to be the house of the opera star, Pietro Seville. Oh, so that... And his wife? Yeah, yeah, his wife's Lorna Seville, soprano. Of course, Lorna Seville. Uh Uh-huh, so this record he sent was the right one. Opera all over the place. Yeah, I suppose it was. Only, who sent it to him? And why? I told you what I said about the cook door, the story of it. Yeah, 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 sure, Miss Brooks. But this guy and his wife were happy enough, I think. They just got back from Europe. And why did she say golden cockerel the minute she saw this cane? How should I know? But 
What did she say she meant? She didn't. But didn't you ask her? How could I? She fainted. Well, maybe she heard the record her husband got. I was thinking about it, that's all. Yeah, maybe a million things in a case like this. Guy gets a phonograph record with music of a certain opera and then gets killed by the same weapon. What kind of a case? You know that record was homemade? Huh? Yes, you could tell. Oh, I don't mean the singing part, the music, but it must have been a re-recording. Someone must have taken the regular commercial record and copied it. You know, it'd take a pretty fancy machine to do that on, wouldn't it? That's what I mean, George. A big console job with its own microphone and all kinds of stuff. Like that one right over there. Hey. Mind if I take a look? I brought the rest of the log. Hey, wait a minute, Riley. Yeah? No other clues, not one? Oh, uh, why ask me? The body was right back there by the door? Yeah, yeah, and the door was half open. So it could have been somebody from the outside or somebody from the inside. And if it was outside, the murderer couldn't have been seen, huh? <laughs> oh, you too can own an exclusive hillside lot with a beautiful view of the rocks and the valley and not another house for over a half mile. You too can have privacy and never all be right, seen. All right, all right, I get the idea. Nobody saw anything. Yeah. I'll meet you downtown, Riley. Right now, I'm going to send for Mrs. Seville. Well, Mr. Valentine? Mrs. Seville, you have a face that a man would never forget. <laughs> well, most men notice my figure, too. I've been in a good many newspapers, Mr. Valentine. Sometimes the critics even notice my voice. Well, I'm not trying to offend. Everyone notices your voice. It's it's very wonderful. But uh, I remember a picture about two years ago. You were mixed up in the breakup of the Carlotti Opera Company. We both used to sing for Carlotti, Pietro and I. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just remember it. That's all. There was a lot of talk in the scandal columns. It was uh, something about a fight. What a lovely memory. Of course it was a fight. A beautiful fight. It took three stagehands to break it up and... A foolish young man from the chorus even went to the hospital, I'm told. Oh, you've never seen such a scandal at heart. All I saw was that that's what broke up the opera company. My husband and I had to leave for Europe, that's all. We had engagements to fill. Engagements, I tell you. The cause of the fight was you and some playboy baritone. Stop it, stop it, stop it. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It might have been just gossip. We had nothing to do with this, Mr. Valentine. With Pietro's death. There's no conceivable connection my, my husband and I were quite happy. Now, please. Please, won't you leave me? Yeah, we'll see. George, come here. I found it. The whisper. What? What are you doing the there? It was on the record. I said one side of it was blank, remember? But here, look. This just looked like a border. But it's three or four grooves right around the edge. Here, listen. So that's what Savelle was talking about. About it. I am sure it is unnecessary to explain my whisper. Because the music on the other side will explain itself. What? Yes, that's all it is. Here, play it again. I am sure it is unnecessary to explain my whisper because the record on the other side will explain itself. And the music did explain itself, didn't it, George? The man who was killed by the golden cockroach. Mrs. Seville, whose voice is that? The whisper? Don't you know? No, I don't. Just to whisper. That's why whoever it is whispers to keep anyone from knowing. You can close the machine now, Miss Brooks. My husband couldn't figure it out. I can't figure it out. I'm certain you can. Oh, sure, lady. But... Hey, Brooksy, is that the record you brought out here, the same one? Of course it is. Huh? Yes, George, you saw me bring it, the one Pietro Seville sent us, the one he received. What makes you so positive, Mrs. Seville? And why didn't you want Miss Brooks playing around with this machine? Why have you been staring? Mr. Valentine, please. George. Sure. Yeah, Brooksy, another record, just like the other one. Here, let me see. Here, play it. The same groove, and it's blank in the middle, I'm like... sure it is unnecessary to explain my whisper, because the music on the other side will explain itself. Come on, come on, turn it over. But it's exactly the same. It's just like the other one. George, it's not the same. All right, Mrs. Seville, let's have the story on this record fast. The record, Mr. Valentine? What about the record? Don't you know it? Aren't you familiar with my greatest success? Salome. Thank you, my dear. Yes, it's Salome. It's Salome's dance. But this record, where did it come from? <laughs> you know, I rather wish I knew that myself. But the postman brought it just this afternoon, and there didn't seem to be a return address. To you, right? It came to you. Yes, yeah, to me. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, no. No, Mr. Valentine, I don't know anything else. 
And if you'll excuse me, I'm going upstairs. I'm walking upstairs. George, she got a record, but she didn't want us to know about it. Even after her husband... I know, but skip it. Now listen, Brooksy. What's this opera about? Well, come on, come on, think. I'm trying to remember. It's based on the Bible story, I guess. Yeah? Um, Salome danced for King Herod. She uh, demanded the head of John the Baptist. What happens to her? I don't remember. Get up there. Get after her, Mrs. Seville. Follow her upstairs. Whether she likes it or not, stay with her. I'm going to phone Riley. She's not there, George. This is the butler, Paul. Okay, Buster, where did Mrs. Seville go? Just outside, sir. What's wrong? I told the madam about the wire I took over the phone. The wire? Western Union. I wrote it down. Here, give me that. I'm at my place down the canyon. Please come at once. Signed, Eric Stanton. Place down the canyon? It's less than a mile around the hill trail. But who is it? Who's Eric Stanton? He used to be with the Sevilles in the old Calate Opera Company. An old friend. A singer. A baritone. Slow down, will you, Mrs. Seville? Oh, I don't want to with me. You're going to have to stand me, lady. Oh, George, you'll sprain an ankle running on that narrow trail. All those rocks on the side of the hill. I'll get her. I said slow down, lady. All right, I'll tell you, but I don't... What else? Are... <laughs> she... She didn't slip... The trail just gave way on her. Let's see. A rock slide. I'm afraid she's dead. Oh. Crushed her before she even knew what happened. But, but that record, George, Salome. I remember now. At the end of the opera, Salome was was crushed to death. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Third day out on your vacation motoring trip. Everybody's up bright and early, ready to get going again. New scenic splendor, new carefree vacation miles. But, oh, car won't start. What's wrong? Dead battery. Well, that's only what might happen on your trip. To avoid such a delay, get a thorough battery checkup before you start out. It's a car saver service you can get at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. So why not have your battery checked tomorrow? They'll make sure the cables are free of corrosion, that water in the battery is at the proper level, and they'll take cell readings. Then for your trip or for your everyday driving, you'll you'll be sure of plenty of battery power for starting your car, for keeping lights bright, for better radio reception. Ask for this car saver service at a standard station or an independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Sure, it is unnecessary to explain my whisper, because the music on the other side will explain itself. These few words on a record, and on the other side, music from an opera. The beautiful Lorna Seville received such a record with the music of Salome, and now she's dead, like Salome, crushed to death. Her husband, Pietro, the aging opera star, received his death notice in the form of music from Le Coq d'Or. He, too, died in the same way as the hero of that opera. If your name is George Valentine, you can't help accepting this case as a personal challenge. Oh, no, if I'd only moved a little faster, I might have saved Lona Seville. Oh, no, George, you couldn't have helped her. Ah, the trail was rigged in advance, Valentine. Don't you understand? Nobody ever used it, and it would have been weakened so much that the weight of a mouse would have started the rocks rolling. It's the program sent from that Eric Stanton brought her onto the trail. Sure, oh, sure. Hey, you're not going to start reading that book again, are you, Valentine? The stories of the office. 
I swiped it from the Seville's library, Riley. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not complaining. Go ahead. Go ahead. Find me an answer. I'd love one. How many operas are there? A hundred, maybe? And at least half of them ending in death? Real fancy dress circle desk that somebody's copying. Look at it. Yeah, uh, yes, Sergeant. What is it? Uh, no point in going up to that other house, that Eric Stanton's place. Why not? Okay. Yeah, the place is all boarded up. There hasn't been anybody in that house for months. Hmm. All right, Riley. The telegram was deliberately sent to get Lorna Seville killed. But before you start scaring yourself over what might happen to 50 other people, let's stick to what we know. Like that man Carlotti I told you about. The one who owned the opera. That's our job, Riley. Find Carlotti. See, si, see, si. it used to be the Carlotti Opera, but now all I own is an empty theater. I am not what you would call a practicing impresario. Uh, Mr. Carlotti, the company broke up two years ago, right? When the Seville's were singing here in town. Oh, such wonderful voices, both of them. See, si, you are right. Now, they left immediately for Europe, but it wasn't to fill a contract, was it? A lot more likely it was to break one, yours. It was a big scandal and a fight and all kinds of things. Oh, no, no, Mr. Valentine. I would not that see... one man landed in the hospital and it took three men. Yes, yes, I closed the opera. Uh, the next day, I have lost touch with everyone. It happens that way. But to blame... When Pietro received his record, he sent it to me. But when his wife received one, even after she knew what had happened to Pietro, she kept quiet. On top of that, she gets a wire signed Eric Stanton. Do you see what I'm driving at? Yes, Yes, it was Stanton. Always Stanton. He has such a smile, so many women, such a voice. In Coke Door, the king refused to give up the queen. Two years ago. That was the reason for the fight. Pietro, he had just discovered and Stanton, so foolhardy, self-confident. Poor Lorna was only confused, undecided. Yes, they fight. They even threatened to kill each other. Pietro kidnapped his wife to Europe, and Stanton threw his gun to South America. Uh-huh. Everyone is upset, of course, but time is such a healer. Mr. Carlotti, Lorna Seville kept quiet today because she thought she knew whose whisper it was, who sent the records, and she had to find out for herself. Then I suppose I must tell you, Stanton is in town. What? Booksy, call right I, I see him in the street opposite Richter's music building a month ago. He's not singing this season, just the social visits. He has an apartment. I, I wish I could protect him more from what you are thinking. Yeah, kind of you. But there's no time for that now. Well, this may be where Stanton lives, but he sure ain't here now. Hey, Riley, over here. Huh? What is it, George? We said it'd take a re-recording to do this. We'll look there. Look. Yeah, Angel, build into the wall. Hey, I see. Holy smoke, there's a turntable, a microphone, and it works. It's even more complete than the one at the Seville. Hey, wait a minute, in the wastebasket. Here, look. A record. A platter that's scratched and cracked. A couple of chips broken out of it. A record just like the others. Sure, even a professional couldn't make home recordings without making a few mistakes and arsing up a platter or two. Yeah? yeah. Lieutenant Dick, janitor says Eric Stanton left here just a few minutes ago. What's that? Yeah. He went down to a place called Richter's. Some big music place where you buy phonograph records. <laughs> My dear sir, we sell more phonograph records than any other company in the city. Our classical section, third floor, has... Uh, never mind the advertising. And when it comes to opera... I just way, ask you if... Our the... salesman has even... I said, wait a minute. Here, yeah, look at this. Oh, dear me. <laughs> what a beautiful bag. That's better, Buster. Eric Stanton, is he here? The better tone? Nearly all great names come to us sooner or later. He said, is he here now? That's what I was going to say. Yes, upstairs, buying records, I think. He comes quite often. Such a game. Uh, stairway's over here. Come on, Valentine. Wait a minute, Riley. Stanton can't get away. Uh, look, friend, uh, do you know opera yourself? Come here, over here, the demonstration model. Well, of course, my field is really instrumental, and at home I like Bach. I don't know how much I can get out of a crack record, but you listen. Oh, dear me. It is quite mutilated, isn't it? Skip it. Just listen. I really don't understand. 
Valentine, that record's different from the others. Of course it is, Barney. How about it, friend? Oh, uh, such a magnificent thing. It's Mozart. Yes, Mozart. Yes. Mozart what? It's from Don Giovanni, the champagne art. It's such a shame the salesman can't sing it for you. Such a tragedy. Poor chap. Don Giovanni, huh? What? Remember, I've been reading a book, Riley. This is one opera we're going to beat to the final curtain. Hey, what's that? Don't you know? Step on it. Run. Bring it along. No, it's not. Come on, Riley. <coughs> hey, listen. It's the same record. Uh, Giovanni. Sure. Somebody's even got the stage set for it. Stanton. Stanton, where are you? Well, he's not here, Valentine. Those booze. Try those booze. You've only got a minute. What? Don't you smell the smoke? That bell was the fire alarm. Hey, Stanton! But how do you know he's... Here, yeah, Riley, this one. Oh, it's locked. In the opera, Don Giovanni couldn't escape the fires that were there to burn him. Here, we'll stand back, will you? Wait a minute. Come on, once more. Let's hit it together. Hey, he's passed out. Hurry here. Sure. It's still plenty of time. Well, congratulations, Valentine. The score's picking up. So is the murderers, Riley. So is the murderers. This is the place, Brooksy. Shut the street door. Lieutenant Riley still back at the fire? Taking Eric Stan to the hospital. Here we are, up these iron steps. Yeah. It's so dark. Nothing emptier than an empty theater, is there? Or an opera house backstage. But the office must be just ahead up there. Mm-hmm. Brooksy, I could have waited for Stanton to wake, wake up, but somehow I think the murderer will be moving fast right now. Here we are. Senior Milo Carlotti. No casting today, no singers required. Such dusty signs. Hmm. Not here. The place is empty. Yeah. George, are you sure Stanton knows? Oh, not by any clues. It's not a kind of a case. There's a madman, but not a madman who goes around killing everybody. Well, all those people were tied up together. Lona Seville, her husband, Eric Stanton, two years ago. More than that, Brooksy. They wrecked things together. Even though they probably never realized how much trouble they caused with their explosive little love triangle. It made Mr. Carlotti close his opera. There's a lot of things I still don't know myself. The character of Don Giovanni, though, that helps. How? Oh. It really ties the murders up with that rough and ready night two years ago. Lorna, the temptress, dies like Salome. Pietro, the old fool in the coke door. And now Don Giovanni. It's Don Juan, the playboy, the libertine. <laughs> Typecast. Oh, but such an involved plan of vengeance for anyone to put him George. You are there, aren't you? Of course. The door is open. It's him. Quick, shut it. No, wait a minute. Uh, who is it? Uh, yes. You are there. I'll come up. George, he's on the stairs. His whisper. His whisper. That's what we've been wrong about, Brooksy. Thinking it was somebody hiding his real voice. It is so nice to find you here, senor. That guy isn't Carlotti. It's somebody coming here to kill him. But so many steps, senor. The whisper that Stanton must have recognized and gone straight to confront to ask why. A man who has to talk that way, who can't talk any way else. Sure, that's why he whispers. Now, Mr. Carlotti, I shall tell you what I've done, what I'll do to you. What? Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Let go. Who are you? Well, we... We might ask you the same question. I'm not so sure, Angel. Maybe we can guess. Who could have locked Stanton in that booth and set that fire? Who'd be in the best place to make phonograph records? Who'd have a chip on his shoulder big enough to kill people because he lost his voice? It was greater than Stanton's. It was greater than Seville's. Huh? Carlotti never would admit it, but it was. My voice, mine. You listened to it. For two years, just an echo. George. I know, I know, friend. You're pretty sorry for yourself, aren't you? You work in the music store, don't you? The salesman there. The yeah, salesman, me. The one the floor walker said had sung in opera. Said it was so tragic, such a shame, you couldn't sing for us now. Oh, no, no, I, I will sing. If you There's like somebody to... else who got hurt in the big fight. When it took three stagehands to break it up. And a foolish man from the chorus was even sent to the hospital. I should have sung Leading Rules. 
But I was knocked to the floor. The stage brace hit my throat. It was their fault. He closed the company. I never had another chance until now, until... Hey! 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 Oh, he's not moving. He hit the floor. He hit the stage. Well, maybe that's what he always wanted. Center stage. But I'm afraid there's no opera that ends this way. was a terrible thing that happened to him. A singer to lose his voice. And all from just an accident. A thoughtless quarrel between some other people, and he was just a bite there. Ah, that was just his version, Miss Brooks. They didn't know he'd been hurt that badly. Stanton even said he went around to the hospital afterwards, but the guy wouldn't even see him. And Carlotti offered financial help, but the guy turned him down. Carlotti says he never had a voice in the first place. Just a failure who wanted something to blame it on. <laughs> Boy, I thought mysteries were rough, but grand opera. <laughs> Holy smoke. Bury him alive, burn him up, stab each other. Good enough, Hit him. Jimmy. So let's forget it for a while and get some different kind of music. All right, darling. I'll calm you down with the radio. Good. Sure. Rippling rhythm, maybe? Nice, sweet jazz. That's it, Angel. Sentimental little stuff that relaxes. I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal, you. Oh, no. <laughs> When you turn off the main highways this summer into dusty, dry roads, remember that nothing can harm those precision-fitted parts in your car's engine faster than oil contaminated by dirt and dust. So for extra protection, use RPM motor oil and have it changed at regular intervals. Ask year-round rural motorists. They'll tell you more people prefer RPM motor oil than any other brand. The reason RPM is first choice where driving's toughest is clear enough. RPM is compounded to keep engines clean and to prevent damage of fine engine parts by foreign matter. At the regular drain and refill period, grit, dust, and carbon particles are drained out with the used oil. And that's just one of the common sense reasons why RPM is first choice where driving's toughest. Why it's the best engine insurance you can buy. Why not start giving your car longer engine life tomorrow? Just ask for RPM motor oil. Ask at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer is Lieutenant Riley. Irene Tedrow was heard as Lorna, Norman Fields as Carlotti, Bill Boucher as Seville, Ted Osborne as The Man... The music clerk, and Bob Griffin as The Whisper. The music is arranged and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>